Hi everybody, welcome back. So I am going to actually be filling up a gap in the Blue Note 4000 project. So I ended up actually getting this record um, and I showed it in a recent finds video. And I ended up getting this record actually from Japan uh, as these particular pressings were really just prominently Japan releases um, and, and obviously have made it over to the US subsequently, you know, as time has gone on. Um, and so obviously the original release was not, but the original pressings of these are just astronomically expensive. So, um, but it is Blue Note 4022. So I'm going to be filling a gap in the Blue Note 4000 project and it's number 22. It's Duke Pearson Profile. And this is Duke Pearson's first album as a leader on Blue Note. And um, you can see right there, it's 4022. And um, it's just a trio setting, this album. It's just him, uh, it's uh, Gene Taylor on bass, and then you have Lex Lump uh, Humphrey on bait on drums. So basically what you're getting is you're getting Duke Pearson with the rest of the rhythm section from the Horace Silver group. That's pretty much who is on this album. And so uh, it ends up that, like I said, this is the first, uh, this is the first album as a leader for Duke Pearson on Blue Note. And uh, it's basically just a nice picture of him against kind of this dark background. And you can see there that it says, you know, profile, a lyrical pianist um, with a fine sense of time and dynamics, ideas of cl clarity and brightness, a flowing effortless swing. And, um, you know, certainly a good way to describe a young Duke Pearson here. Um, the notes are by Ira Gilter. Um, it is a Francis Wolf photo and a Reed Miles cover. Um, and what this one is, is this is actually one of those United Artists releases from the 70s that were prominently released in Japan. Um, and it has that, you know, the uh, Blue Note division of United Artists on it. And I could show you the label towards the tail end um, and I'll get it off the turntable. Uh, it has seven songs on it in total. And like I said, it's just a trio setting. Um, so obviously a majority of what you're gonna get in this is obviously primarily Pearson's playing and you're gonna get, you know, a strong sense of him kind of taking the front of the show, you know, being a piano led trio. So the first song is Like Somebody to Love. Um, and just like the album cover says, it's a very lyrical approach by Pearson. Um, there's a very nice chromatic head, like, figures to this song. He does a lot of different uh, chromatic patterns in his soloing, some really nice melody lines throughout the head of the song and then obviously throughout his solo. Um, what I notice as well, just from a band perspective, Gene Taylor, um, which he was known for this, very, very full bass tone um, and some very interesting phrasing and lines that Duke Pearson does throughout that song. Uh, the second song is called Black Coffee, and there's a really, really cool intro on that song. Um, and the bass line is really awesome in the intro as well. There's a very catchy melody to that song. Absolutely, definitely on side one, it's got probably the catchiest melody of it. Um, Gene Taylor absolutely is fantastic on that song. He really, really just has some solid groovy playing, really in the pocket, really keeps the time well with Lex uh, Humphrey and really creates a just a nice solid foundation where Pearson can obviously float over the top of that and do what he wanted to do. Um, the next song is called Taboo and that has a really really cool intro by the bass and the drums. The bass and the drums really kind of uh, run that song. Pearson obviously has a very nice solo in that song and the phrasing of the head and the rhythm of the head and the bass line is really, really cool. And the drums and the bass really create a solid foundation for that song and really, really make it an enjoyable song to listen to. Um, track four is called I'm Glad There Is You. And this is a really, really simple but effective ballad. And the drumming on this is fantastic really simple drumming but super effective drumming and very very good cymbal work you know the the important thing about drumming sometimes is not so much even what you're what you are saying as much as you're not saying 
some of the space that you leave and the gaps that you leave for the other players sometimes is just as important as the space you're filling out with your noise and rhythm that you're coming from your drum kit. And Lex Humphreys does that beautifully in that song. He really creates a lot of space, but timed space. You know, there's a difference between playing and just arbitrarily leaving space. And then there's a difference between leaving space for the purpose of the song and a musical space. And Monk was really a genius at that. And really good drummers know how to do that. And Lex Humphrey is no exception to that. So uh, that's track four, I'm Glad There Was You. Track five is a super catchy song. It's called Gate City Blues. Um, very, very catchy melody. It's the first song on side two. Um, and really nice solo by Pearson, really great bass tone again by Gene Taylor. Just a really, really catchy song, catchy blues. That's, you know, obviously, you know, by the name you can tell it's a blues. Track six is Two Mile Run, and that has an awesome drum, sol drum intro into it. And then there's a great solo by Pearson, really nice bass solo as well. Um, there's a good trading four section of the drums as you get towards the tail end of the song. And it has this really nice, just counterpoint, you know, counterpoints to it that they're playing with each other as they're phrase diff putting different phrases uh, for each other back and forth. And then the last song is a standard, which is Witchcraft. Um, really just a great swinging song, great drumming on that. That is the opposite of the ballad on, on side one, where Lex Humphreys is filling the space then with his drum kit and really making it for a solid foundation to that song and really good swing and rhythm. There's a really cool syncopated stops in that song during the melody and during the solos. There's a really great bass line in that song by Gene Taylor. Great syncopated line, great rhythm to his line, really fills out the song and really makes it have that foundation that wants to make you move. And that's kind of the sign of a good bass line is that it makes you move. And that is definitely something Gene Taylor was really good at. And I think that's partly in playing all those years with Horace Silver and really getting a lot of that Latin jazz feel to it where so much of it is really based on getting you to move, not so much a cerebral approach, but just the movement of the music. Uh, so that is Blue Note 4022, Duke Pearson Profile. Uh, not so much an easy title to find. Uh, there is a, obviously an original pressing of it, which is very, very expensive. Um, into the hun very high hundreds sometimes, can even hit the thousand if it's like really near mint. Um, there's this pressing, which like I said, is a United Artists pressing, which I showed in that uh, United Artists video that I did, but that's what those labels look like. It's that division of United Artists. Um, and uh, a lot of them were mono that went to Japan. Joe at Analog Archive went over that. Um, and uh, so that is Duke Pearson Profile, Blue Note 4022, uh, 4022, however you'd like to say it. Um, just to give you also a side note, this was um, came out in 1960, so uh, it was recorded I think late 59 and came out in 1960. Duke Pearson Profile Blue Note 4022. Thank you guys so much for watching, and sure, I'm sure I'll get this up on the playlist in the 4000 series. So thank you all, and I will see you next time.